I welcome you all to today's service. It's not one of the easiest services for me as I begin to share with you today. It is the first for me to be reflecting a little bit more as we celebrate about Mother's Day. And this is the first for me to be not having my mother and celebrating with her today. And so with our candles, I lit today in loving memory of our beloved mothers by the Gifts and Memorials Fund. And so as we go through this service, I have, some of you might wonder exactly what's this little red belt on it. It's just one of the um, sashes that my mom would usually wear. And so I wear it today also in remembrance of my dear beloved mother. And as I go on, it's not only my mother, but to the mothers out there. In my Shona culture, we have the term my, M-A-I, meaning the women that have raised us to be where we are. And so to me, mother is not only a reflection of only my birth mother, but I was raised with my aunties and also including my sisters. And so I celebrate the women of faith and the love that they have. We light the candle today as it is Mother's Day. We are also grateful for the flowers that came from the worship committee to enable us to remember the beautiful things that mothers do for us. Before we get into our time of prayer, I would call you to just center your mind and your thoughts in just having a quiet time. 
And for those that have the significant mothers inside of their lives, wherever you're sitting, and if they are in reach of you, I would just ask you to just share with them and remind them how much you love them. Gracious Creator on this Mother's Day, we are so thankful for those mothers that have raised us, for those women of faith that has brought us to be where we are. We are so grateful that you birthed this church to give us life, to give us the energy. And as we go through this service, we are so grateful that you have given us this wonderful musicians of through Michael and Sheridan to share the wonderful songs from their hearts. On this Mother's Day we celebrate you, O oh God, because you are the center of our lives. And help us as we go through this service to know that you are our God. In the name of the Holy Creator we come before you saying Amen. Chapter 9, verse 13, 
and until chapter uh, until verse 16. The second one is Ecclesiastes. That is chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. And then we are going to go to Ecclesiastes chapter 1 again, verses 12 to 14. And then we are going to go to Ecclesiastes 12, 13 to 14. So I'll just go that again with you. That Second Chronicles chapter 9, 13 through 16. And then Ecclesiastes, that we are going to have chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. And then we are going to go through Ecclesiastes 1 again, 12 through 14. And then chapter 12, verse 13 and 14. And so I begin to read to you. Solomon's great wealth. The weight of gold that came to Solomon yearly was 660 talents of gold. To some, we would come to understand that this is about approximately 25 tons of gold. Besides that, the traveling merchants and the traders brought and all the kings of Arabia and the governors of the country bought the gold and silver to Solomon. And the king made 200 large shields of hammered gold, 600 shekels of hammered gold as well. He also made 300 shields of hammered gold. 300 shekels of gold it was. The king put them in the house in the forest of Lebanon. Our second reading Our second reading comes from Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. Reflections of a royal philosopher. The words of the teacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem, vanity of vanities, says the teacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. Our third reading, 12 through 14. I, the teacher, when king over Israel in Jerusalem, applied my mind to seek and to search out by my wisdom all that is done under he the heaven. It is an unhappy business that God has given human beings to be busy with. I saw all the deeds that are done under the sun and see all is vanity and a chasing after the wind. I hope you're still with me. And then we go to chapter 12, 13 and 14. And it says, The end of the matter all has been heard. Fear God and keep His commandments. For that is the whole duty of everyone. For God will bring every deed into judgment, including every secret 
seeing whether good or evil. Here ends today's reading. Amen. wondering the readings today that we have been listening to, what is the connection and how is it that we can connect some of these things in the times that we are in. But I am delighted at the end of the day that we marvel that we can share a little bit more about what this gospel has to say to us. I want you to journey with me for the little bit of time that we have during this time. During the course of this week, I was listening to President Joe Biden as he was talking about the trillions of dollars that he was planning to bring forth to the people. Not only that, he was having this plan that he had before people and he was saying how he's planning to go through it. But you see, I marvel that in the beginning, if some of you read your Gospels a little bit closer, you'd find there's nothing new under the sun. When I talk about there's nothing new under the sun, we want to talk about the man called Solomon. He was a king, and as wealthy as Solomon was, he talked about trillions. Now you think of it as we talked about that Solomon managed, he reigned for 40 years, and in these 40 years, Bear with me for a little while. He, be, he managed to receive 25 tons of gold every year. And Solomon managed to reign for 40 years. So there's nothing new that the president is talking about when he comes in and says, I'm spending a trillion dollars. Not only is it a trillion dollars that is there, he comes in and says that I have experienced wealth, but this wealth has amounted to something that I can never imagine. Also, in my reading, I came across one of the world's richest men by the name Jeff Bezos. He was going when I was reading through it, he was talking, they were 
the media came out and said that he was going through a divorce. I hope you are following me with the story here. The man is so wealthy that he's one of the world's richest men that you can ever imagine. But he's going through a divorce. During the course of this week again, we, get, we also get to read about one of the world's richest men. That he was one of the world's richest men before. That was Bill Gates. But we also learn that Bill Gates is having a divorce with his wife. These folks had been married for over 25 years. And so they had to go through this divorce. Regardless of the wealth that they had. And so Solomon goes and says, you know, I have experienced all these things. In our world, we are told consistently that when you have enough money, it is surely going to open those doors for you. It is going to do all the wonderful things for you. Don't get me wrong about this wealth business. I just want to take a different slant to what I have read here. Solomon goes and says, the words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem, vanity of vanities, says the preacher. Vanity of vanity, all is vanity. This is a person that I marvel at that he says he has experienced it all. He goes and says, the preacher as king of Israel in Jerusalem, and I set my heart to seek and search out by wisdom concerning all that is done. Under heaven, the burdensome task God has given to the sons of men by which they may be exercised. I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and indeed all is vanity, grasping for the wind. Solomon is searching for love. Solomon is searching for love this Mother's Day. Solomon is searching for love this Mother's Day because money in the wealth that we have talked about, that now it seems like we talk about trillions, and yet way before you and I were born, Solomon talks about vanity. Vanity, vanity, vanity. I cannot understand it all that this man has it all, but he talks about vanity. In the past weeks, I was talking about the woman who was caught committing adultery. And through the past two weeks, I was sharing with you that it is not so much about this woman where this story is. But today, I want to highlight the mothers that have raised us to be where we are. Some mothers have had it more difficult than anything else. When I was reading a little bit more about Mother's Day and there was so much of a distinction about those mothers who birthed others, some who couldn't birth others, and I was saying to myself, you know, I do not like distinctions. I just like calling you mother, and that's it. One time, one person was asking me, Hati, how many mothers do you have? And I said, I can't count them on my own fingers, because in my culture, we do not delineate the mothers. As I was sharing a little bit more with folks that some folks talk about first cousin, some talk, talk about second cousin, some folks talk about third cousin. I'm thinking in my world, I don't want to be labeled as a third cousin. Why is 
say even that distinction, I would rather if it is just cousin. But our world puts labels and Solomon goes and talks about vanity. All of it is vanity. This woman came before Jesus. Last week we left it with the woman standing before Jesus. And I come before you saying that, you know, this woman came in, I can bet you she was dragged to come before Jesus. With her clothes torn, with people hooting and hollering and shaming her. She stood before Jesus. I come before you talking about what Solomon says and says vanity. All is vanity when I look at the world's richest men, the world's richest women. Solomon goes and says, I've experienced it all. All is vanity. But for, Solomon is looking and searching for love in all the world's possessions and he cannot find it and that comes in and says vanity. All is vanity. And so I look at it a little bit further and I come to you and I say this woman of love and faith stood before Jesus. Today I want to take you to West Africa the year is 2003. The women in Liberia had been facing a war for the past 15 years. Charles Taylor had ravaged the countryside and most of it, some of you might come to understand what is called blood diamonds. People were being butchered back and forth because somebody wanted some diamonds. The women of Liberia came together and they said, enough is enough. These women stood before the high courts and the churches and said, enough is enough. As women, we have had enough. And these women joined together. Muslim women came together with Christian women. And they stood before the men who were doing the peace building. For some of you might see the pictures that were there, that these women stayed in the halls of those peace building conventions that were going on. Those conversations, those women said, we are not going to leave this building until you have signed a peace accord. Because as women, we are not coming with money. We are not coming with guns. We are not coming with plowshares, but we are coming with our hearts of love that we are tired. We need that love for this country. We need this love for this country. And so I think of it that these women, regardless of where they are, have done quite a lot. I think of it here when we talk about thanksgiving. Most of it, when I came to the Western world, I was reminded so much all the time when they always talked about my mother's thanksgiving. And I also came to learn, it was, most of them were also quick to remind me, Hati, she's not my birth mother, but she is my mother. Those thanksgivings, are something when you don't have your mothers there. Last year was a difficult one because most people could not come and corral around that table of thanksgiving and enjoy that wonderful meal. And so I come to you and say that the love that women have given and they continue to give, those women of faith is something that I marvel at because what I'm trying to say to you is that what Solomon is saying 
Vanity of vanities. I have searched this earth and I've seen everything. I might have all the wealth. I might have everything that I have. But if you do not have that love that is offered to you, I became a minister because of my mother. I became a minister because of my grandma. She spent so many times praying for me. At times I would figure out, man, I don't know why you pray for me so much. In time she always said, well, I see, I pray for you because I want something to happen in your life. Maybe at times it is that she prayed for me that I needed to make sure I pay attention in class because half the time I was allergic to school all the time. So I figured she would pray for me, Hati, I'm praying for you because I'm wondering exactly what is it that is happening to you. She always marveled in the later years of my education and she always said to me, Hati, I, of all my children that came through my house, I didn't think you were going to make it. I look at her and she always laughs at me and she says, I didn't think you were making it because I remember putting you in class and you started having goosebumps because you were allergic to school. Yeah, I did not want anything to do with school whatsoever. And it is, I bet wherever she is, she's laughing at me right now because I'm in a, I'm in a church that is filled with so many principals and so many retired teachers. I don't know, you know. God's laughing at me as well, wondering exactly God's humor because we have so many teachers around here. For a kid who never liked school at all, you put me in class, I'm the first one to be calling sick because I'm, I'm, I, I, I did not know what it was. But my mom all the time, I, I, and my aunties and my grandma, they would be all praying that maybe this guy might like school. But God has a sense of humor. Years later, that's why I laugh with, with them. I'm in a church that has teachers. And so I come to you today and I say, Happy Mother's Day. I don't want to put a distinction on birthright because that has got nothing to do with me. But I want to come and say to you that the women of faith have so much love. Women have gone through so much trying to find that they can get equal pay. Trying to see that they've gone through this suffrage so that they can vote. So that they can also have the same standing in parliament. I'm talking about women who spent the time fighting for the rights of other women to break that glass ceiling. Solomon comes and says, vanity of vanities. It is not to do about the money. It is not about money at all. This is the love that the women have. That the women who prayed for me to be where I am, it was not about the money, but they knew how to have that conversation with me. And so today we celebrate Mother's Day with so much love, with so much care that we might have this COVID around us and we are so tired, it, it is tying us. But that does not stop the love that the mothers out there are giving. Tirelessly, they work day in and day out so that you and I can enjoy the times that we have. The love that they have, the faith that they have. And so I come to you saying that these women of Liberia, you find how they manage to sit in those holes and say that we are not going to go anywhere until all you men have sat down and made sure that you have signed that peace accord.
I marvel at it at the end of the day that this Mother's Day Solomon goes and says vanity of vanities what I know is let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter fear God and keep his commands for this is all that matters for God will bring every work into judgment when every man Mel had left the woman stood before Jesus and Jesus said, I do not condemn you either. Go now in peace. Because what you have gone through is a lot of shame, is a lot of praise, is a lot of gratitude. I do not condemn you as well. Because whatever else it is, I salute all the women of faith for what they have gone through and what they are going to go through. For they have come to the very center and God gives them the energy to continue on a marvelous time that we live. I end with one of the things that one of the aunties who raised me. I was way taller than her, but she always used to remind me, Hattie, I don't care that you're more than six foot tall. Short as I am, I will bring you to my size and I'll have that conversation with you. And for sure I know she meant it, because that's the woman that she was. That she wanted the best for me. And I know the women that are there, I say to you, Happy Mother's Day. May the Lord be with you, and may the Lord bless you in all the ways possible. Because not all is vanity. If you journey with our heavenly creator. And so may the Lord be with you. Amen. So as we get into our time of prayer, Sherilyn was telling me about her aunt who is now feeling well. And it is a good news on this Mother's Day time. And it is such a blessing that we can celebrate such wonderful news. And at this time as well, we celebrate during this Mother's Day as we, wherever we are and whatever else we are doing, we are celebrating because this God that has given us this wonderful mothers to journey with us have given us some wonderful faith. As I mentioned today, it is not always as easy because the women who raised me, I always remember them and they always carry them inside my heart. And I always hear the voices that are there and the announcement of the good health that we may have. And so, let us bow our heads and pray. Gracious Creator, we come to you this day. On this Mother's Day. That we celebrate those women that have made a wonderful impact on our lives. That they have gone through a lot, but still have come the other side knowing that the love that is inside their heart does not make them any lesser of who they are. We pray for them, Lord, We are thankful for the UCW at this church. We are thankful for the leadership that they keep on providing for this church, the direction in what they have.
But we are thankful that the love that they have keeps us strong. And we can't take it for granted. We do not forget to pray for this church. We are thankful for the leadership. We are thankful for the congregation. We are thankful for the folks who keep on making it run, even though we have not managed to come together and worship in this building. We are worshiping in our different homes, but we still have that call and that love that we have amongst us that keeps us strong. We are praying for these difficult times during this COVID that we cannot meet and we are getting tired and we are getting restless and we are not sure what is happening. But we pray, Lord, that you may continue being with us. We pray for Sherilyn's aunt. We pray for the Kehoe family. And we also pray for the Brooks family. We also pray for the Mount family. We pray that you may continue to be with them. And at this time, we take a moment to just pause, that you may say the prayers wherever you are. The candles have been lit for you wherever you are resting. Gracious Creator, we thank you for the gifts that has been given to you so that your work may continue in all the ways possible. And together we come before you saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. 